Starship SN9 has begun its testing regimen, SpaceX encounters more Starlink drama, Falcon 9 missions are about to kick off the new year, and Starship's progress through 2020 is today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. So last week we discussed Starship's quick return to the launch pad after December 9th's 12 and a half click flight. Well, since our last episode, SN9 has begun its series of stress tests, starting of course with the ambient nitrogen leak check on Monday. And all must have checked out because the following day a cryoproof was performed and even the forward and aft RCS thrusters were tested. The next road closure is scheduled for Monday, possibly for a wet dress rehearsal and a static fire to follow sometime after. Last night, the FAA put a notum in place for these tests. Elon tweeted that the vehicle will use helium to pressurize the methane header tank, the tank that failed to provide enough pressure during SN8's landing a few weeks ago. However, the long-term solution is under debate. It's not yet clear what is the lightest and simplest solution. Elon reiterated that production is the hard part. These prototypes are easy. Building 1,000 starships to create a self-sustaining city on Mars is our mission. That's a lot of spaceships, but don't doubt him. At the end of this episode, I'll show you how much SpaceX has accomplished in just a single year down there in Boca Chica, Texas. There are currently eight additional Starships being constructed as we speak. SN10 is on standby for nose cone integration. SN11 now has its tank segments stacked. And Elon provided us some new interesting developments with the Super Heavy booster. We're going to try to catch the booster with the launch tower arm using the grid fence to take the load. This will save mass and cost of legs and enables immediate repositioning of the booster on the launch mount, ready to refly in under an hour. Legs would certainly work, but best part is no part, best step is no step. If you're now confused and wondering what this catch could look like, don't worry, you're not alone. Several people have already attempted to animate what the strategy could entail. I myself immediately started wondering how they could construct grid fins with enough support to absorb the shock load. Well, Elon did at least elaborate that the launch stand could have the built-in shock absorbers instead of the booster. Starship Super Heavy will still eventually launch and land at sea on and from platforms. Might be a few lumps along the way, which should get you excited. SpaceX always tends to have the best fireworks shows. What do you want first? Oh, Lord! Lord, Jesus! Oh, Lord! Moving on to Starlink news. Viasat, a broadband and internet service provider, has asked the Federal Communications Commission to execute an environmental review of SpaceX's Starlink program, claiming that launching thousands of satellites is a potential hazard to space operations and pollutes the sky, obstructing the view of astronomers, as well as polluting the Earth during launches and re-entries into the atmosphere. I'm going to jump in here with my two cents right quick, since this is my video after all. SpaceX plans to put 12,000 Starlink satellites into orbit over the next several years, maybe upping that number to 40,000 in the distant future. To this day, they have put about 1,000 into orbit, some of which have been deorbited and burnt up in the atmosphere already, which is what they're designed to do so they won't pollute our oceans. When the program first began, astronomers were complaining about streaks of light photobombing their pictures, but ever since, SpaceX has been working with them to find solutions like implementing sun visors to the satellites and pointing them in certain directions until they reach their parking orbit. You know, that way they won't reflect the sunlight. And as far as rocket pollution is concerned, I recommend you watch Tim's video on the subject. Basically, some rocket pollution isn't exactly healthy for the environment, but it beats the airline industry. Elon Musk responded that Starlink only really poses a hazard to Viasat's profits. Stop the sneaky moves, Charlie Ergen and Mark Dankberg. This action is whack, not dank. His hair, whack. His gear, whack. The way that he doesn't even like to smile, whack. And while we're on the topic of constellations, SpaceX just won a $150 million contract with the Pentagon Space Agency to launch up to 28 satellites into orbit. These sats will be a mixture in sizes of small and medium. It will consist of 20 data relay spacecraft and eight missile warning satellites. Both launches of 14 sats will lift off out of Vandenberg as early as late 2022. All right, and last thing here, we do have a Falcon launch coming up next week on Monday. SpaceX will be launching a communication satellite for a Turkish satellite operator at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. I'll be live for that. You're invited to join me. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. SpaceX's Starship progress through 2020 is today's honorable mention because quite frankly, it was a tough year, but through tenacity and hard work, they crushed it. So here's a quick recap of how Starship began the year and how it ended it.
Now, keep in mind, this is just SpaceX's Boca Chica operations. They also conducted a successful in-flight abort, launched astronauts on Crew Dragon, flew a new Cargo Dragon capsule to the space station, and launched almost a thousand Starlink satellites into orbit. So yeah, I'm looking forward to what they can accomplish this year. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, eccentric members and patrons for supporting the channel. Have a normal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.